again and welcome back to Home of Your Bible. Yeah. Uh, what a morning, what a day. Um, you know, I was just thinking maybe I shouldn't bother with this whole thing because I don't think I've ever had so much problems trying to get on this program before. You know what I'm saying? And the Steve's telling me that I have a um, um, I have a video where I don't have anything, you know. It's just technology, you know, I don't have any brain to think. By the way, I'm still going to try to do the whole program, right? I would thank God for, and for you for joining me and opening your Bible and give you a lot of thanks, all right? Let's sing Heavenly Sunshine. Heavenly Sunshine, Heavenly Sunshine, right in my soul.
capture them. Every time when you you um, you go and you gotta catch that plane and everything just work out so smooth. You got and then there's another time when just pure madness and you never I've, if you know it, I've had to be at the airport and I've, I have to go back home. <laughs> I've had to sleep at the airport too, overnight, so, so much, so much, so much for life. Okay, well, today we're talking about Jesus the healer, alright, and um, Jesus is a, we, we, when we talk about healing, we we um, tend to think about like well, it's a miracle. Like, but in truth and in fact, um, we experience healing all the while. You know, um, from a child, all of us get a cut. In fact, when you look at your body. Let me see if I can find one here right now. Uh, I don't know. All right, let me know. <laughs> so for that. But if you look at your body, you will see a scar here and a scar there, and. Uh, Sometimes maybe you might remember what happened that day when why you have that scar because there was a a cut there or especially if it was something deep a gash or something like that you will see a a scar there um, because the thing healed but when it healed it left a mark but then there are times when it heals and leaves no mark right so healing is something that our bodies are made to to heal on its own, right? Because there are things that happen, you know, you eat something, you drink something, something cut, you know, all these things happen, it's to, it's to bleed. And um, even without a band-aid or anything like that, the body is designed to close it up. And uh, the band-aid really doesn't close it up, it just helps to protect it, you know. So, so healing is something we see all the while. And it's not, I mean, you know, you don't understand it. You don't understand how come that thing closes up and then, you know, it looks normal again. You don't know what, but God has made our body in such a way for it to heal. But then there are some things that are in our bodies that sometimes the problem is so bad or sometimes we're born that way. Sometimes it came out the womb, sometimes it, it didn't happen when you were born, it happened after you were born. And it actually creates a problem for, for you how you live, you see what I'm saying, and um, um, in those cases, uh, people normally, sometimes they look to doctors to help them, <laughs> but there are cases where the doctors cannot help, and even when they sometimes try to help, they sometimes create more problems. Um, and it leaves scars on their bodies and all these sort of things. So they take scars from their back, put on their face maybe. But if you look at the back, the back is messed up now, but the face might look better or something. But when we need a real healing, we go to God, right? So when we say that Jesus was a healer, he was one who would speak a word or touch somebody. And whatever the problem it was, whether it was they were depressed uh, with, with devils, oppressed with devils, or they were in blindness, or so whatever the problem was, it would just go away like that, and your life would be so much better afterwards. So in Mark chapter 10, it tells about a man who had, um, who was blind, and and I think you should think about it. Maybe I, 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 I'm going to revisit this later on, but um, uh, what what um if what would you really um if what would you really I, I don't know if I put it the right way but if if you were to lose something one of the things that I'm sure you wouldn't want to lose is your eyesight right you know, this but this man had none right you know um a person of a have a problem with his eyesight. He's in a room with lots of people. He can't know if people are there because unless they maybe make a shout then you might feel, oh there's a crowd of people in here. You're hearing, you can hear, but you can't see. Right? When you see when you can see, 
you can almost hear too because you can get an idea of what's going on around you right but nevertheless hearing does not replace sight and seeing and seeing does not replace hearing but I think somebody would rather have your sight than lose your anything else right your hearing or you know um well smelling you need that too but I guess you know uh, all of that stuff, but your sight is very important. The Bible said, the light of the body, the eye, when you open your eyes, you know, you open your eyes in the morning, you know, you're awake, you can see things, you know, and and everything, you, 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 your body takes in everything that's going on around you, just by your eyesight. And this man had none. And so, um, he used to beg, and people saw him, they would give him something. Excuse me. Hello. Let me just read that scripture. Um, scripture said, and they came to Jer and they came to Jericho, and said, "See me, this as they went out out of Jericho with disciples, a great number of people, with a great number of people, and a great number of people. Sorry, blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, um, sat by the highway, by the highway side begging." So his name was, his daddy's name was Timus, and, and so his name was Bar Timus, or Timus, which means his son of, okay? And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, um, that it was, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him the Holy Spirit. So in other words, he couldn't see what was going on, but when the crowd was, was going on, he heard a commotion. And he said, like, what, what's going on? And, and when he listened to what being said, and then he heard that it was Jesus who was the actual Jesus himself was passing by. And, and he had heard about him before. So he began bawling out, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And somebody said, like, what? What do you mean, have mercy on me? Okay, I mean, but all of a sudden, all the money he was collecting and all of these things around him became unimportant. And so he said to Jesus. Then eventually, Jesus said, um, bring, him, bring him over here, bring him over here. Let me, let me find out what is, what is his problem, what, is, what, is, what he wants from me. And the scripture said, um, and Jesus said, answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. So there are so many things he was dealing with, right? And um, so many problems he had in life, and uh, which, I mean, we all have problems. But he re the one thing that he really wanted was his sight. And so when the Lord asked him, what do you want me to do for you, right? It's all well and good, he was crying out, have mercy on me. Okay, what do you want me to do? You want me to give you um, some money, a, a sack of gold? What do you want me to give you? What do you want me to help you to get to X place or Y place? Do you want me to send one of my disciples to accompany you home? Or what, what do you want me to do for you? And Jesus said, the man said, all he said to him, all I'm interested in right now is if, he just, if I could just get back my sight. If I could just get my sight. That I might receive my sight, not get back my sight, because apparently he was born that way. And Jesus said to him, uh, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole, and immediately received his sight. And, it, and that was it. So that's why we talk about healing, because the things that Jesus was doing, and um, some of us, God has given us the gift to do things like that too, you know, in, in small proportions. I mean, there's nothing for you, you know, excited about, but every time I go, we like to cry our Lord. But our Lord was doing these things all the while, all the while. And even people who came and touched him, all of a sudden they said, oh, wow, I'm healed. I said, just like that. People came and just touched him. So he didn't even have to touch them. They would be healed. 
right? And people who um, had problems with the plagues and spirits, and all these things, they were healed. So, Jesus, our Lord, he was a healer. And um, <coughs> the scripture tells you that the man received his sight immediately. Immediately. So now he doesn't need anybody to permission to ask him where well, can you go with me somewhere? He could just go himself. Right? He could just go himself. Um and the scripture says also here in Matthew 8, it said, Behold, um there's a verse here where it says um um where is it? Maybe I can't find it now, but it says that many people went out and everybody they brought a lot of people to him, and every one of them who touched him, they were made whole. All right, so we just want to pray right now at this time, and we want to give God thanks, Almighty God, our gracious our Father, the great Yahweh who dwell between the cherubim, the Lord of hosts, and name you shine for the earth with your glory. Let your glory rest upon us, your light shine out of us, be the exalted far above the heavens. Be the exalted far above the earth, be the exalted far above the heavens, and I glory be above the clouds. Uh, the kingdom and the power and the glory for the mighty nation, my the great Father, we thank you for another Shabbat. Thank you for another open peer Bible program. We thank you for the children of this portion. Our Lord, they say, uh, we always learn that the child is better late than never. Took me a long while to figure out what on earth that really meant, but when children I grew older, <laughs> I figured it. And so, Lord, we thank you, Father, today for your grace, your favor, bless them. Preserve their going out and coming in. Remember the, the ones who are still in school. Remember those who are uh, our father, their parents to provide for them uh, food and clothes and preserve their going out and their coming and keep them from evil. Your holy angels watch over them, my God. And I pray you bless us to live for thee, cause us to rise up before the establish our going out and coming in. Grant that the purpose of our lives accomplishing us for time and eternity. Give our Father and cover out the body of the great eternal land. Cover out the almighty wings of the great eternal land. Go before us to pillar up by my night. Pillar up cover by day. Save us in your kingdom and our Lord shall the great shall come in the world. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the almighty name. Jesus Christ our Lord, you show me shall the great. We taught us to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy be done on earth as in heaven. Give us their daily bread and forgive us our debts before our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, you show me sure the great and Christo Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Um, okay, so let's see a little somehow.
by Chiller Street. Um, you know, whatever it is, Chiller, I forget the portion, you know what I'm saying? Because um, 